Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we're going to take a look at a retro gaming operating system for your Raspberry Pi 4 called Botocera. In this video, I'll show you how to burn the image, the initial setup, and then we'll play some games, such as Crazy Taxi on the Dreamcast. Let's go ahead and get started. let's go ahead and download Botocera. You want to go to botocera.org, then go to the download link, and once you do that, you want to scroll down until you see the Raspberry Pi 4. Of course, there are other models that are supported, but we're going to be taking a look at the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. Once downloaded, you want to load it up in Belina Etcher. If you don't have it already installed, go to belina.io forward slash etcher, select the file, Go ahead and click open and then we'll go to select target and I'm going to install this to a 128 gigabyte micro SD card. Make sure you have the correct drive selected and once you do click continue and the image will be burned to your micro SD card. It'll take only a few minutes and once it's done you're ready for the next step. If you're not familiar with how to set up your Raspberry Pi 4 in a case, I've got several videos, as you see here, that you can go check out that'll help you with that. Now that we have our image, we'll go ahead and remove the back cover of this particular case and remove the old micro SD card and pop in our new one. This is the 128 gigabyte that we just flashed. Now we're going to go ahead and slide it into the micro SD slot and reinstall the cover. Now we'll flip the unit over and go ahead and power it up. When you first boot up the Raspberry Pi 4 running Botocera, you will see this blue screen. Do not worry, blue screens are good when you're powering up your Botocera image. <laughs> Just means it's resizing everything. All right, so now we are in Botocera, but we need a controller. And I happen to have had this controller sitting in the office for a couple of months. I think it's due time that we go ahead and install it. Alright, so the only thing out of the box that we really need besides the controller is this little dongle. So I'm going to plug that into the Raspberry Pi 4. A wired controller will also work. Alright, so let's go ahead and set up this new controller. I'm going to hold down the button and press up, down, left, right, start, select. And the A, B, X, and Y, I'm going to use the icons as shown here instead of the button layout. And now the rest of the buttons, the L1... R1, L2, R2, L3, R3, and the hotkey of select. Now that our controller is configured, let's go ahead and set up the network. In this case, I'm going to go to the network settings and move down to where it says enable Wi-Fi. You can use a hardwired connection if you want to go over Ethernet, but I'm going to use Wi-Fi. We're going to go to the SSID and select our SSID, which in this case is Lucas24. Enter your passphrase. And if you don't see it say connected immediately, just back out and go back in. It'll show you your IP address. And let's highlight the IP address here for you. You might want to jot that down. You might need it for the next step. All right, so now let's go ahead and go back. And we are now going to check and see if there are any updates available, which there most likely will not be since we just flashed this image. But it's a good idea to go ahead and check every now and then. Now I'm going to use my PC to copy some BIOS and ROM files. To do that, type backslash backslash Botocera. Alternatively, you can also type backslash backslash and your IP address if you have any trouble connecting. Once you press enter, you'll see a single share here called Simply Share. We're going to go ahead and copy our BIOS for the PS1, Dreamcast, and GBA. So I'm going to go into the BIOS subdirectory on the Botocera image, and I'm just going to copy and paste the bin files. And again, this is for Dreamcast and PS1. 
Some systems don't need them, other systems do. Now let's go to the ROMs, and here is a list of all the emulators that are pre-installed for you. It's a very nice selection. We'll go to PSX, and one thing I want to show you here is that this little text file will show you what types of file formats are supported, which is very handy. All right, so now let's go ahead and copy some games. I'm going to go ahead and load it up with several, and we'll move on to our next step. And that is, hit start on your controller, move on down to where you see update game list, press A, and A again, and it'll update the game list, and you'll see many more systems are now available, because now we have our games on it. We'll go into PlayStation, and you can see four of the games that I've copied over. We'll hit start, and we'll move on down to the view style, and I'm going to select detailed and hit back and as you can see it's kind of boring here well let's fix that we'll go ahead and hit start again and then we'll move on down to where it says scrape and I'm going to change it to box 3d and move down to scrape now and simply click start once we do that you can see in the upper right it's going out there and scraping all the artwork and some video and yeah this is pretty cool so now we have artwork for all our games and some video clips and yeah, this is much better. We even have some game information at the bottom, ratings, the release date, number of supported players. Now this background music that you're hearing, that's been playing the entire time, but I've been hiding it from you so it's not so distracting. We're going to go ahead and turn that off if we go down to sound settings and turn off front end music. There we go, peace and quiet yet again. <laughs> Now if you press start and go to updates and downloads, select themes, and then from there you can select a bunch of different themes that you might want to add to your Botocera installation. I'm going to go ahead and select several. I'm going to fast forward through this. And what you do, you can go back to UI settings and select a different theme. I'll put the name of the theme at the top here so you can take a look at it. They're pretty cool. And you can change other characteristics, such as the animations and so forth. But uh, yeah, it's very awesome. Lots of themes to choose from. Not as many as what you see in RetroPie, but the ones that are on here are very high quality and uh, very impressive. Here's a Tron theme. This is the Zoid theme, which is also pretty cool. Now let's put it through its paces and play some games. And now we're going to jump right in with F1 World Grand Prix on the Dreamcast. Now we're going to switch over to Crazy Taxi, also on the Dreamcast. Let's try a little bit of the classics with Asteroids on the Game Boy. You can also alter the shaders and all kinds of configurations and customizations that you can make to the emulators and the games. Very cool stuff. Alright, now we're going to move on to Atlantis on the Atari 2600. Notice the bezel. I think that's pretty awesome. You can turn that off if you prefer not to have the bezels, but I kind of like it. <laughs> it's pretty neat. Alright, now we're going to move on to Donkey Kong Country on the Super NES. I still have my SNES console, and this is one of my favorite games that I like to play on it.
All right, now let's switch over to the PlayStation. We're going to take a look at Street Fighter Alpha. And the ever popular Tekken 3. Round one. Fight. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed this look at Botocera for your Raspberry Pi 4. I've been playing it for a little over a week now, and I am really enjoying it. I think it's an awesome build, and the games play fantastic. I'll leave some links for you in the show notes below if you want to go check out Botocera. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please click the like button. If you want to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, I shall talk to you very soon.